Another bounce back win and another shutout win for the Kansas City Royals. We'll dive into it next on Lockdown Royals. You are Locked On Royals, your daily Kansas City Royals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Locked On Royals on the Locked On Podcast Network. As always, I'm your host, Jack Johnson. You can find me on Twitter or X at JohnnyJ underscore 15. That's at J-O-H-N-Y-J underscore 15. You also can catch us on wherever you get your podcasts. That can be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts. We're on Odyssey. And we're on YouTube. Just be sure to hit that follow button and subscribe. We're getting very close to, I think it is 1,400 subscribers. So we have just seen a tremendous jump and less than a year since taking over this podcast. So I can't thank you guys enough for making this podcast grow so much. If you are that first-time listener, though, of course, welcome in. We love new listeners here on the Lockdown Royals channel. If you want to know a little bit more about me, I am based here in Kansas City. I work over at Sports Radio 810. WHB. I do some co-hosting there. I do some hosting from time to time, and I also do some producing. So I stay very, very busy in the sports world. But when you come here, you know that you get 30 straight minutes of Royals baseball. And today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. We're going to have tons of sponsors to shout out throughout today's show, but we first want to give some love to eBay Motors. They're going to have you covered. I've been having a hell of a time uh, with car troubles of late, but eBay Motors is uh, just somebody that you can trust, you can rely on, and they're always going to have that part that you need, and it's going to fit right every single time. So eBay Motors, a very proud sponsor of today's show on Locked on Royals. Well, the boys in blue bounced back tonight on the south side of Chicago. They had lost their series to begin the road trip to the New York Mets, but it kind of felt like that game on Sunday could have gone either way. Cole Reagans was masterful. You couldn't really complain with what he was doing. And really, I couldn't complain about the bullpen as much as we all would like to. I thought they were getting squeezed, Chris Stratton especially, in that eighth inning. John Schreiber danced out of danger, and Chris Stratton was the one that got squeezed too much in that game. And if you score zero runs, eventually a good team, a good offense, and a one that's rolling like the Mets is going to bite you. Uh, That's just going to come back to haunt you if your offense is – not playing that well. And really in that series against New York, they weren't playing well. They had that great performance in game two when they started all righties against Sean Manaya, And it worked out for them. But the regulars, I'll be honest, they've hit a little bit of a slump. Everybody except Benny Pasquantino, right? Michael Garcia is now over his last 17. MJ Melendez, you know, my golden boy, my pick for comeback player of the year, at least for this team. Uh, he's been in a little bit of a slump. Nelson Velasquez slumping a little bit. The important thing is, though, they're still winning. At the end of the day, they are still winning baseball games. And when your offense goes through a drought, which every team, even the best ones, the Atlanta Braves lineup, the Dodgers lineup, the Yankees lineup, they're going to go through tough stretches where you just aren't hitting in the way that maybe you were the week before. I mean, the Royals last week had nine runs in the first inning. Right? That's the best the offense can look. They can also look as bad as they did on Sunday, where they're just whiffing over the top of an excellent changeup by Jose Buto uh, and a slider as well to go along with that, but just weren't picking them up. And tonight against Nick Nestrini, I think a little bit of it was that they were not really familiar and they weren't really prepared with what they were going to see. Now, that sounds like a shot at the coaching staff. It's not. Nick Nestrini was making his major league debut, and the Sox are going to be throwing another rookie making his debut tomorrow night. So that just tells you. Uh, where their rotation is at at this point in time. But you can see in baseball from time to time, there's an advantage when you are a rookie and you're facing a lineup for the first time. I think we saw it in the Royals' favor when Alec Marsh took the bump against Baltimore. Just a young guy. Now he had more experience than Nick Nestrini. But when you don't have a book on him and your guys haven't seen him, it takes a little bit to adjust. And through the first three innings, Nick Nestrini was perfect. And it wasn't until Vinny Pasquantino popped one out of the yard at 421 feet, uh, 108 miles an hour off the bat, that the offense kind of had their shoulders relax a little bit. They didn't seem as tense up at the plate. And some guys are pressing right now in the same way that Vinny Pasquantino was pressing in the first 10 games of the season or the first 13 games of the season. Now you're seeing a guy that knows he's hitting very well and he's got the confidence and he's scorching the ball and you're going to have that in your lineup. 
The good thing is, though, on nights when you don't have it. I mean, the White Sox are a dismal, awful baseball team. I, I hate to take shots at other teams when they're not here to defend themselves. There's not a White Sox fan I'm talking to. Maybe there is. But I just I don't see how this team's going to win 55 games. I mean, the Royals won 56 last year. Let me back up. I don't know how they're going to win 50 games. They're so banged up, and there are so many guys that just aren't good contributors. When your offense isn't playing well, it's easy to shut down that offense. I mean, Ryan LaFever said on the broadcast tonight, he said, you know, this offense is not one of the best in baseball, and it's obvious to see. And that was basically saying this group, there's just not a lot of guys that are big league hitters. But what you can do is shut down those hitters. Do what you're supposed to do. And Seth Lugo uh, was just masterful. And the way we said Cole Reagans was masterful on Sunday, Seth Lugo just took the ball and said, I'm not going to let this losing streak if you will get the two games. And it's not really a losing streak after you lose one. But back in the win column, you're 11 and 6. Five-year wins this year are against a really bad White Sox team, but you only can play who's in front of you, right? You can only play who's on your schedule, and the only thing you want to do to a bad team is beat them. And the Royals can win the season series tomorrow night if they win. They will not see the White Sox after Wednesday until the middle-slash-end part of July. So why not grab the first seven against them? You know, just get seven wins right there in the month of April, help you out a little bit. But this rotation, I mean, man, what more can you say? They're not going to be this perfect every single time out. I mean, we've seen it a few times this year. Michael Walker looked a little bit iffy on Friday. Alec Marsh didn't look that good on Saturday. Um, Cole Reagans did not look that good last week when facing Houston. You're going to have those off nights. Seth Lugo, though, has not had an off night just yet. He's allowed three runs in his first four starts as a Royal. I mean, Money well spent if you were just taking a snapshot of four starts because Seth Lugo has been that guy. He has been the anchor in this rotation. And really, I would say Seth Lugo, bear with me here, I think he's been the most important piece of this rotation. You know the upside of Cole Reagans, but it's that much sweeter when you know that when Cole Reagans throws, you got Seth Lugo right behind him. And after Seth Lugo, you've got a really good bounce back candidate in Brady Singer. And after Brady Singer, if Singer doesn't throw well, you got an experienced veteran and a guy that had a low 3.2 ERA last year in Michael Walker. Then you roll the dice with Alec Marsh. Right now, this rotation is just taking the ball, shoving, and panning it to the next guy. Right? Seth Lugo walked off the mound and said, Brady, go get him tomorrow. Let's just continue this trend. Let's win this series. Let's get back to Kansas City on a winning road trip. And if it's the White Sox that we have seven wins against, in our first 13 games of the year, that's still 7-0 and against one team in one month. It's not a good baseball team, but you beat bad baseball teams. The Royals were that bad team last year. And quite frankly, the Royals haven't struggled with the White Sox in a long time. Even when the White Sox were playing good baseball, the Royals were always that team that were kind of the thorn in their side. But this is why I think... I'm not too concerned about Michael Garcia's slump. I'm not really concerned about the offense slumping a little bit. They're winning right now. And you know that in baseball, over 162, there's peaks and valleys. And what you hope to avoid is your offense struggling and your pitching struggling at the exact same time. That's what leads to that nine-game losing streak, that 10-game losing streak. I mean, the White Sox right now, honestly, this is how bad they are, their pitching has been okay, at least against the Royals in a handful of these games, they just can't hit. And I don't know if they're ever really going to hit, to be honest with you. But to me, this is the sign of a competitive team. I mean, earlier on tonight, I'm looking at Nick Nestrini's shove, and I'm going, man, I hope Seth Lugo's on his game. Not that I thought the White Sox bullpen was going to lock it down, but you didn't want to follow up Sunday's performance with another clunker and only score one run against the worst team in baseball. Now, the Royals only had two runs, but when you shut out the White Sox, which, by the way, was the sixth time they've been shut out in their first 16 games, just unbelievable to think about, you just grab the W. And there are good things you can take away with this. Vinny Pasquantino is still hot. We're going to talk about Salvador Perez and James MacArthur throughout this show. But you're 11-6 and right now. You have a very, very good chance 
of sweeping this series. I'm going to go that far. I'm not even going to lowball it and say take two of three. I know that's the goal. That's the bare minimum goal. They have a really good chance to sweep this series. I like the pitching matchups in the last two games. I was completely wrong about the Mets series. I said, didn't like the pitch up, pitching matchup on Saturday. They won that game, said I love the pitching matchup on Friday and Sunday. They lost both those games. But I'll be quite honest with you. I just, I think this team rolls back into Kansas City at 13-6, and six, and hopefully a big crowd is waiting for them when they take out one of the best and young teams in all in baseball and the Baltimore Orioles. Okay, let's quickly take our first break of the show. When we come back, Salvador Perez might have avoided disaster. We're going to dive into that next on Locked on Royals. You are tuned into Locked on Royals on the Locked on Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jack Johnson. You can follow me on Twitter, X at J underscore 15. Before we go any further, I want to give a shout out to a couple of the sponsors today, starting with eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience, the formula. For winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and much, much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. And eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. We also want to give a shout out to one of the other sponsors today and a new sponsor to Locked On Royals in Monopoly Go. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you about this huge announcement. I've been tracking the leaderboards every day, keeping my eye on the scores, putting all of my heart into it, and I'm super pumped to announce I'm finally on top. That's right. Obviously, I'm talking about the hit mobile game Monopoly Go. You've probably heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great mobile twist on classic Monopoly, and you can play anywhere, anytime. You explore hundreds of Monopoly boards from Las Vegas to Camelot to the moon, all while raking in a huge fortune. But my favorite part is the leaderboards, where you can see who's a Monopoly tycoon and who has gone bankrupt. So go get yourself on the charts. Download Monopoly Go now, free on the App Store and on Google Play. So the good word that the Royals got before their game against the White Sox uh, involves Salvador Perez, who we all knew on Sunday had quite the scare. Uh, we watched that game on Sunday. I'm just speaking for all of us, I guess. Uh, I watched the game on Sunday. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But when Salvador Perez got slid into by Starling Marte, my initial thought was he got spiked, right? It, it's, it's a bang, bang play at the plate. You got spiked. It's always going to be a bit of a stinger. And then when he was down a little bit longer and he's limping, I'm going, maybe that's a, a quad contusion a knee contusion, a bad bruise, right? And then I went back and saw an extra replay. And when Salvi had shown the ball that he actually had it, he was called out, or Starling Marte was called out, I saw his hand kind of go to his groin. And I went, oh, no. That is the last thing this Royals offense needs, is their captain, their hottest hitter, going on the injured list for an extended period of time. Now, I am a Freddie Fermin fan. I think that Freddie Fermin is better than most backups, but he's not Salvador Perez. He doesn't give you that type of pop in the four hole. And with the Royals offense struggling, at least in three of their last four games, it is excellent news, maybe even better than the victory, to know that he's going to be fine. And it came from the man himself. He tweeted out today that he's going to be back tomorrow. He even lobbied to play in tonight's game against the White Sox. So you have a lot of optimism, a lot of hope. If I'm Mac Quattrero, I may wait. I may just say, look, we want you healthy all year long. There's no need to force it against a team that we can win two other games with Freddie Fermin behind the plate. We got to make sure you're 100% healthy. But for it to only be a grade one groin strain, it is excellent news. Because a grade one groin strain is more of like a, an overextension. I did some little medical research just to you know catch myself up on it. It's really a pain tolerance thing. And Salvador Perez said, I have no pain, which is why he wanted to play tonight. And that's who he is. He's the Iron Man, if you will. 
uh, of playing baseball games behind the plate. He wants to be back out there uh, more than anybody. But you just had to take a sigh of relief knowing that an injury like this really had the best case scenario from it. I mean, when he was limping off the field, there was a feel of he may be gone a month and a half, maybe longer than that. I mean, groin injuries can be so, so tough on a catcher. And with Salvador Perez, I mean, he's reaching his mid-30s. He's a bigger catcher. That groin is going to be taking on a lot of stress. So you avoid that and you go, this offense is going to go and play two rookies in a rotation and a really bad third pitcher on Wednesday in the White Sox. And they're going to be just fine without Salvador Perez. But that wasn't, uh, you know, just the the end goal there. Just, oh, just go win a couple games and get hot and then get back for Baltimore. And Salvador Perez isn't in the lineup and he won't be for a long time. But, hey, you won three games in Chicago. No, it was, you know, let's let's see how easy we can take this. That was my thought after Salvador Perez said, I'm going to be back tomorrow. I'm going to lobby to play again. And it really falls in the the court of Matt Quattrero. Do you want to rush this? Uh, even if Salvi's lobbying to play, I, I think Salvador Perez has enough pull where if he told Matt Quattrero, listen, I'm I'm playing, right? It's That doesn't hurt me. And the doctor said it's a grade one groin strain. It ain't getting hurt any worse. And I feel great. At that point, yeah, you probably put him back out there to start playing. You're not just going to rest him if there's really not a need to rest him. Now, some people have differing opinions on that. You may say, Look, I mean, he's saying that because he's a ball player and he wants to get out there and he will play through pain if he has to. But I do think that the disaster was avoided. This was the best news of the day that wasn't winning a baseball game, right? Because if the Royals had lost Salvador Perez, it wouldn't have been the end of the season. Right? It wouldn't have been. I don't think one the one player I don't believe you can lose, and it's obvious, it's Bobby Wood Jr. You lose Bobby Wood Jr., this team can't do what it wants to do. If Salvador Perez had missed an extended chunk of time, it would have only been a few weeks, in my opinion, before Freddie Fermin really had started to, you know, be exposed as just not as good as Salvador Perez. You would have seen a noticeable hole in that lineup. And you get to avoid that. And you're 11 and six right now. I mean, it almost would have taken the, the wind out of the sails of this start. Of man, I mean, it's this early, and if you lose Salvador Perez for a month and a half, that that's a huge piece of this lineup that you can't go without that long. Not with the way he's been hitting. And if he comes back tomorrow and he doesn't miss a beat, you feel like the biggest crisis in the world was averted. Because we all know, over 162 games, you are bound to lose some guys. You just hope the guys that you lose you can play without for an extended period of time. Like if, and I never am going to you know pinpoint injuries on guys, but you, you look at you know Michael Massey. I think Michael Massey boosts this team and makes him better, but he's not the transformative guy of if he's not there, you're not going to win many games. I think there are very few that hold that honor for the Royals. It's Bobby Wood Jr., it's Salvador Perez, it's Vinny Pasquantino, and that's probably it for the lineup. Michael Garcia, yes, but with the way he's hitting, I mean, maybe I should lump Michael Garcia in there because Vinny Pasquantino was hitting the exact same way like 10 games ago or five games ago. So I'll put those four in there. As for the rest, you know, I think there are ways you could play with that. That's not to minimize, but I'm just not going to say nine players are all, you know, absolutely essential and they're paramount to the Royals winning games. You have about three to four guys that if they're out, two of them are out, three of them are out. I mean, you're, you're not going to win that game. For the rotation, probably the top three, right? Cole Reagans, Michael Walker, Seth Lugo for the bullpen right now. It's John Schreiber and James MacArthur. You're going to struggle closing out games. But to me, this was, you know, just almost like a, a dream, if you will. It felt fake. It was like, how in the world is he going to be fine after one game off? This is a groin injury we're talking about. And it's a, a grade one strain, the mildest form. And Salvador Perez, we know him as an Iron Man. But wow, I mean, to win a game and then you get great news about your captain, the vibes are very high. As everybody's been saying, Kansas City, the vibes are very high about this baseball team. It is hard not to smile when talking about the Royals and how through 17 games they've been very fortunate. They're playing good baseball, 
even in games they're losing, they're competitive. They've got the best run differential in the league. And they've got a fun homestand coming up. And Salvador Perez is going to be playing in that homestand. And that should be music to the ears of every Royals fan out there. Before we move on to our final segment, it's Locked On's NFL Mock Draft Live on April 17th at 6 p.m. Central Time. And it's going to be streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 6 p.m. Central Time to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft on April 17th at 6 p.m. Central Time streaming live on Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk about James MacArthur stepping into the closer's role and his path to earn that spot. That's coming up on Locked On Royals. You are tuning to Locked On Royals on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jack Johnson, and you can follow me on Twitter or X at JohnnyJ underscore 15, and you can find us on wherever you get your podcasts. That can be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts. We're on Odyssey, and we're on YouTube. Just be sure to hit that follow button and subscribe. Before we move on to our final segment, Want to give a shout out to the final sponsor today in Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. They are the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. Securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments. A comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors, and it's how Yahoo Finance ensures you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. For a comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor at yahoofinance.com. The number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. Well, the final thing I wanted to touch on today involved the man who closed out the game for the Kansas City Royals, and that was James MacArthur. James MacArthur is such a cool and interesting story, and I had the chance to talk to him in spring training, and he was developing a cutter at the time. But uh, you looked at his path and how he had gotten to this point, and I am sure there were thoughts in 2023 that entered James MacArthur's head that were negative of, is it even worth it anymore? And am I going to get to the big leagues? Is this really a career that I can keep pursuing? If you don't believe me, I mean, he was a 26-year-old in in AAA. I mean, he's on the doorstep, but the Phillies were a great team, right? Still are a great team. They are off to a slow start, but it's a really good team. And he had a 7.31 ERA in AAA. I don't think the Phillies were thinking about calling up James MacArthur anytime soon, and he had kind of surpassed prospect status. Well, the Royals, and the spot that they were at, bad bullpen, bad team, bad rotation, thought James MacArthur was worth taking a shot on. The analytical department thought the curveball would play at the big league level. And they acquired him after the Phillies had DFA'd him four days before that. And the Royals send a 19-year-old prospect who had been hitting pretty well in the Royal system over to Philadelphia. And the thought at the time was, what the hell are they doing? Uh, They're in no position with their bad farm system to be trading away lottery ticket guys for 26-year-old guys in AAA with high ERAs. It just doesn't make any sense. And then James MacArthur makes his debut in Kansas City. Awful. Gives up seven runs, I think, in the first inning. Now, he had come on in relief, but it was against Cleveland. And you just you know, felt gutted for the guy. Absolutely gutted. It was you know, something you never wish on anybody when their dream comes true, no matter the circumstance of that game. And for James MacArthur to just get battered in the way that he did, it was like, how do you recover from that? 
And he goes back to the minor leagues, and he's pitching better. But at that point, I don't think any fan in Kansas City is going, well, I can't wait for him to get another chance. And then he does get that another chance. And he kind of finds himself in a niche role. He was an opener at one point, then he was long relief, and then he really settled into the back end of the bullpen. And then September happens. And he becomes one of the best relievers in the American League. And you were, like, waiting for this for so long with the Royals. You know, when are they going to be the, the beneficiary of some hidden gem in somebody's system? Like what Tampa Bay does all the time or, or how the Royals would lose bullpen arms and they would go elsewhere and they would succeed. When can they be on the receiving end of that? Well, James MacArthur seems to be that guy now. He was the closer at the end of the year. He was successful in that role. He started off a little bit sluggish, right? He had given up a pair of runs. He had given up the, the tying run. And the first outing of the year was game two against Minnesota. But the stuff looked really good. And he still wasn't really finding his footing in Baltimore. But now, since stepping back into the closers role, he seems to have the it factor. And against the White Sox tonight, his stuff looked as good as it ever has. Because the velocity is now there. He's not sitting 92 to 93 with that power curve. It's 95, 96, 97 with a wicked curveball, a wicked sweeper. It's tough to hit. It's closer stuff. And this is the beautiful part about the Royals' run so far in April. And the good, really, the good play they had in the second half of last year, the good play they had in September, is that the guys that are performing well are some of the guys that J.J. Bacolo acquired last year when they didn't have many resources. I had jumped the gun on J.J. Bacolo at the trade deadline of last year. They were so quiet, and they hadn't traded Barlow. And they hadn't traded Ryan Yarbrough. It was like, what in the world are they doing? A year like this, why are you not trying to acquire talent? Well, they traded the role as Chapman early, and Cole Reagans looked underwhelming by the numbers. And, you know, I, I really liked Roni Cabrera, who they'd gotten in the Reagans trade because he was a lottery ticket guy. But it was like, you didn't feel that anybody was that close to Kansas City or was going to succeed in Kansas City. Cole Reagans does. We know what he is now. Nelson Velasquez, they trade Jose Quas for. And then as James MacArthur now packaged into this, you know, trading guys off the scrap heap and getting these, you know, Island of Misfit toys, and they're turning into studs in Kansas City. And not just studs that are, oh, he's a bench guy and he plays pretty. Like, I think Dyron Blanco is a good bench guy, and he was acquired for Jake Diekman back in 2019, like a five-year gap. But Paul Reagans is a dark horse to win the Cy Young. And even some national experts have picked him to win the Cy Young. You traded a 35-year-old Aroldis Chapman for him, right? Uh, you look at Nelson Velasquez, 30 home run power, maybe even 40 home run power. And he's looked like a huge piece for the middle of that lineup. They traded Jose Quas, who at one point was a minor league infielder, stopped playing baseball, was a FedEx driver, came back, Reinvented themselves as a sidewinder. It was an awesome story, but the Royals traded to Chicago because they need the bullpen help, and they get that power in their lineup. And with MacArthur, I'm sure the Phillies weren't even thinking about James MacArthur. It's like, oh, the Royals are going to give us an 18, 19 year old prospect, and we're going to have to give up a 26 year old guy in AAA with a seven plus ERA. That's fine. That's all right. And the Royals had been screwed over by so many trades like that in the past, and now they seem to be on the benefiting side of it. James MacArthur, I know it's early, but I think we do have to lump him into that category of Nelson Velasquez and Cole Reagans, a guy that has done serious damage in a good way in that bullpen. It appears the Royals have finally found their closer. He's now got three saves since taking over for Will Smith in that role. Will Smith probably now just moving to a lefty specialist role or will pitch in blowouts because James MacArthur absolutely is the guy and what a path he's had to get to Kansas City. Well, that is going to do it for another edition of Lockdown Royals and the Lockdown Podcast Network. I have been your host, Jack Johnson, and you can always find me on Twitter, X, at JohnnyJ underscore 15. One last shout-out to Lockdown Sports Today. It's here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every league. And you can find that on the Amazon Fire TV channels app or on the Lockdown Podcast Network YouTube page. Tomorrow, we are going to have a morning episode this time. Dive into more of the struggles and Vinny Pasquantino going on a tear. But until then, you take it easy, Kansas City.